Welcome back, Chess Kids. It is another Fun Master Mike YouTube happy hour, and we are going to continue to celebrate the latest world championship from Grandmaster Alexander Kostaniak, the Russian voice of Chess Kid. I was going to be that voice, and then I remembered, oh yeah, I can't speak Russian. My Russian is Olchemplocha. Uh, it's pretty bad. That's it. We're back to English, but we're going to celebrate Alexandra's final three wins. Now, if you weren't with us in part one, we looked at wins number two, three, and four. What happened to win number one? It wasn't important. But now, let's take a look at her final three wins. She sprinkled in some draws just to salt the title. But here was one of those wins against one of her fellow country women. And she's in a bit of trouble here. I'm not going to lie. This pin is very, very annoying on her king. That rook is looking bad. But luckily for her, there is no way for this rook to be attacked a third time. So here's a... White did. White tried to remove the guard. Yeah, we have a chess kid video on that. Knight to f7. That actually looked like a solid idea the first time I reviewed this game, but Alexandra finds a way to get out of the pin and actually reach a rather pleasant ending, at least much more pleasant than the middle game. The first thing she does was she gets out of that diagonal. You can understand why. Now, Knight takes. That was, after all, White's idea all along, but of course, you don't want to take back. You'll just take and you'll be down a piece. We can play this in-between move. Yeah, that keeps happening. Our lesson on Zwitschenzug is coming in handy. Rook to e1, threatening all kinds of back ring troubles. Now, this knight still looks like it's in bad shape. Now, white did really well to retain, well, objectively, slightly better material by playing knight f7. But after takes, takes, and queen here, white pretty much had to trade queens. And after takes, takes, materially it's exactly equal right a rook and a pawn for two minor pieces however in chess kid land we pretty much always say two minor pieces are better uh, with the exception being maybe if the pawn is like super advanced or something this is one of those crazy positions where despite white having the two minor pieces the rook just has way too many open lines this is actually a position where the rook i don't know if it's better but it's at least equal to the bishop and the knight. So what chess kid video would be applicable to this? Mm, I don't really know. Actually, maybe the one called exceptions to the rules. Yeah, that may be a catch all video, but it definitely applies here because it's not that easy for white to sort out these pieces. And the reason is after rook over and then we get to this sort of position, the king can never cross over for white. The king needs to be a part of the game. If we could just pick up this king and put it on e3, I think white's just winning because the knight would go back to e5 to shelter the king from checks. That's a forever outpost on the square e5, and white is just better. The rook has no squares that are useful on the f or the e or the d files. But this is the constant problem. The king can never cross over. If it happens right now, the rook will take, and black will be up a pawn in the end game. So white has to move and give check, but after king back, how do we get our king over? The computer won't let me make illegal moves. And this was basically White's problem the entire ending. Now, I don't think White should lose this game, but it is quite difficult for White to really make a lot of progress. In fact, we're going to do a little bit of fast forward here. We're just going to make a whole bunch of moves. And you can see that White King is completely stuck. It never finds a way in the game. And in fact, I'm going to play a few more moves here. And we're going to see eventually the Rook gets in the game right in this position. And oh, baby, uh-oh. Now we can see that the Black Rook is sort of dominating. And after takes, White's position fell apart and Kostinyuk went on to win this game. Okay, let's move on to round six. Kostinyuk had the white pieces again. We had all kinds of super fun tactics here. Which chess kid lesson are you gonna to wanna to review before doing this one? Maybe deflection. Wait, wait, don't go there now. You're still with me on YouTube. Okay, go watch the deflection video later. In this position, she first starts out by taking. Now that gives black a very strong pass pawn. What is her idea? Well, her idea is to activate this rook. She really wants her rook to be able to get to e7. But of course, the queen's guarding. But wait a minute. What else is the queen guarding? That's right. She's guarding the bishop. Would that make the queen an overworked piece? Yeah, I think so. One of our earliest chess kid lessons. What do we do about that? We grab the bishop, and now white has uh, all of the play. Black is in all kinds of trouble. Mate is, of course, the threat. If you take with the queen, rook takes, and I don't really want to be black in this position. There's too many checkmate threats coming up on the board. Even queen here, which stops immediate checkmate, would result in something like rook takes b7, and the queen's taking here, and eventually it's going to be a winning position. The strength of this pawn is not really going to be able to save the black pieces. So if we go back to this position, black could also take this way, but this leads to a checkmate because after king here, take, I'm either going to mate you here or I'm going to mate you here. Which one do you want? Here? Here. 
here, here. You play king here, I mate you here. Okay, you get the point. So we go back. One final idea for black is to just push to try to keep the rook off the seventh rank. But wait a minute. The queen is still overworked trying to guard this pawn and guard the checkmate. So white went BAM! Of course, you better not take the rook because it's mate. Now black tried for counterplay by pushing and watch this, absolutely amazing. Kostanyuk says, I'm the chess queen, even though you can have two queens, I'm the chess queen. Wait, I'm not the queen, I'm, I'm, I'm a dude. But Kostanyuk, she's the chess queen. And amazingly, even though black got a second queen, Black is still lost. Now, Black can avoid the checkmate by sacrificing the queen. This is the way that Black chose to give away the queen. But after pawn f4, take, take, king here, take, king here, take, take, take. <laughs> kind of boringly, uh, Kostinyuk had her three extra pawns and went on to win the game. So amazingly, gave away a second queen and yet still won the game due to all of those ideas of deflection and overworked piece. Okay, one more win salted away the Women's World Rapid Championship for Mrs. Kostenyuk. And what are we gonna look at first? Well, she was white here and her opponent tried to get a wedge pawn. Now in my video on wedge pawns, the wedge was pretty much always the hero. This is one of those cases where the wedge pawn is actually weak. Now she didn't take right away because black would just take and get the pawn back. So what she did was she decided to keep that weak pawn on the board, defend her own pawn and threaten to win it. In fact, for a moment, she ended up actually winning a pawn by playing queen takes. However, black does get the pawn back but black has to give away the bishop pair to do so. Because after knight check, take, take, she transitioned her material advantage into one where she has the bishop pair. Hmm, do we have a chess kid video on the bishop pair? We do, but you know who else has a video on the bishop pair? That's right, Vichy does. Vichy did a couple of videos on the bishop pair. And frankly, they're better than mine. You know, he's got that extra 600 rating points on me. So uh, let's go with Vichy's videos. Yeah, you guys should review those, okay? How did her bishop pair end up winning? Well, let's just play a couple of moves quickly here. And you're gonna see these bishops are gonna have a ton of teeth. Uh-oh, wait a minute. One more chess kid lesson. Don't take that pawn because I can choose between discovered check winning your queen or a simple pin that wins your queen. Which chess kid lesson will I use? Hmm, doesn't matter, I win your queen. Okay, so after queen here, look at these bishops. They are exactly what we talk about when we talk about the bishop pair. And after rook over, she has no, getting her bishop to the square c5. You can all see when the knight moves, the bishop is coming to the square d6. She won the exchange by using those bishops. And of course, she went on to win this position. She made a couple of draws to close things out on the final day. Congratulations to Grandmaster Alexandra Kostinyuk. It is a pleasure working with you, but now it's a pleasure working with a world champion. If you haven't already subscribed to YouTube, go ahead and do it now. You never know what other member of our staff will win a world championship. If there's a world championship of chess dad jokes, I'm in the hunt. Other than that, it's probably not going to be me winning that next world title.